Okay, so part two of the video I left off where we're doing the DIYs. And if I flip over, we're looking at uh, tangent is positive and quadrant one and three. So if you inverse tangent, you'll get 41 degrees. So draw that in the first quadrant because it touches the or the uh, positive x-axis and the terminal side. That will be a reference angle. So now go to quadrant three and draw a 41 degree reference angle. And then what you're looking at is from the positive x-axis, you go 180 degrees and an additional 41. So that's how we come up with 221. Now in the second one, inverse cosine, the negative angle, <clears throat> you end up getting 97 degrees. So 97 degrees from the x-axis puts me into the second quadrant. And that's one of the quadrants where I expected an answer. And I also expect one in quadrant three. <clears throat> so one way to do this is just to say if it's 97, this direction, it'll also be 97 from this direction. And so you could just say, okay, what's 360 minus 97, which is a little bit different than what uh, we teach with reference angle, but it will work. So I'm gonna show you another method. With that 97, I would do something like this. So it opened up 97 degrees, which means my reference angle is 83. So then I expected an answer down here. So I'm going to draw another angle in the third quadrant. So that would wrap all the way around the green angle. And if I use that 83 here, I can do my 180 plus 83 and I also get 263 so that's why 97 and 263 were the answers all right so on this last one uh, we're supposed to use the unit circle to help us find some of these answers So I would right now pull out a unit circle and we're gonna do some work with it. So this first example is the sine of some angle is producing a one half. Sine of some angle is producing one half. So when I look over here at the unit circle, remember that the first number is cosine, the second number is sine. And if I look right here, the second number is one half. So I'm going to write down either pi over 6 or 30 degrees. Again, if you look at the instructions right here, you can do your answers in radians or do your answers in degrees. It's also sine is 1 half over here. So 150 or 5 pi over 6. So for that one, I probably would just write down 30 degrees and 150 degrees. So the second one we're doing is cosine is negative root 2 over 2. Now I know right away that root 2 over 2, those are the 45s. So really I just need to figure out where is cosine negative. And looking at the unit circle, looking at the unit circle, cosine is negative over here in quadrants 2 and 3, the first the first number is going to the left. That's your x or your cosine. So it's negative root 2 over 2 right here, which is 135 or 3 pi over 4. And it's also cosine is negative root 2 over 2 right here, which is 225 or 5 pi over 4. So I would write down, again, you can do degrees or radians. I'm just going to do degrees. Now the next one, the tangent, is not on our unit circle. So in class, <clears throat> I stop and I do some work and I say the tangent of 30, the tangent of 45, and the tangent of 60. So for the tangent of 30, if you look at the 
unit circle again, 30 is here, sine is 1 half, cosine is root 3 over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do 1 half over root 3 over 2. So now when you do 1 half, I don't divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. 2's will go away. 1 over root 3, I have to rationalize that. And my final answer is root 3 over 3. Now if I do the same thing for the 45's, remember 45's have the same two order pairs, whether they're positive or negative, so it's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and when you do that one, you get 1. So around the unit circle, tangent of 45 is 1 or negative 1, depending on what quadrant you're in, so those are pretty easy to remember. And then finally, the tangent of 60 would be the reverse of the 30, so it's root 3 will be your sine on top, your cosine on the bottom is one half. So you get root three over two times two over one. And when you get rid of the twos, you're left with root three over one, which is root three. Now what I try to um, get some of my students to understand is, or to memorize tangents of 30s and 60s because it makes your work a little bit easier. And one of the things we talk about is that compared to each other, that one's the small one and this one's the big one. And if you look, that's the smaller of the two angles and this one is the bigger of the two angles. So I actually ask students to start memorizing root 3 over 3 for the tangent of 30 and root 3 for the tangents of 60s as you go around the unit circle. So when you look above, all I have to do is because this is root 3 over 3, I know the tangent is positive in 1 and 3, but negative in 2 and 4. So I just need to find an angle in 2 and 4, and I would call them the 30s. So if I go over to the unit circle, I go to 2 and I go to 4. The 30 degree angle here is 150, and the 30 degree angle here is 130. Now, in the last one, we're looking at secant, which is to flip my cosine. So when I look at the unit circle, we have to kind of think, which, which of these numbers, when I flip, it would give me root 2? So if I flip the 1 half, I would get 2. If I flip 2 over root 3, I'm going to end up with something with a 3 in it. So I'm kind of guessing it's one of these. So let's take a look at what would happen. What happens if I take a root 2 over 2 and I write the reciprocal? It's going to become that. And then I rationalize it. 2's will go away and it's root 2. So this tells me Remember that these are for 45 degree angles, root 2 over 2, you see them at all the 45s. So what it tells me is that I'm looking where cosine or secant is positive and I'm going to pick out the 45s. So back to the unit circle. I want to find where cosine is positive and that's over here. Your x value is positive in 1 and 4 and I want the 45s. So 45 here, flip that one, and 45 here. So my two answers would be 45 degrees and 315 degrees.